All right. Welcome everybody to today's webinar. Um, I am Lee Kessler. I'm going to be guiding you through this. Just we're going to wait about 20 seconds. Some people are still logging on. Uh, we want to give everybody the chance to be part of this. Um, hopefully all can hear me. Uh, things seem like you can, so that's good. And um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to today's webinar on the Charity Engine CRM and Fundraising Platform. Our webinar today is entitled Reduce Software and Improve Your Data. Again, I am Lee Kessler. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Charity Engine. And uh, you can reach me by Twitter at Lee Kess. And also Charity Engine's Twitter handle is at Charity Engine US. So uh, you can always follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions, reach out to uh, us via marketing at CharityEngine.net, which you see in the bottom corner of the screen. So I want to start off with this quote about really what this webinar today is for. Data silos make it hard to manage across an organization. They are barriers to a single view of a donor. But for many fundraising teams, this situation is the reality of life today. And that was by Philip King in Nonprofit Pro. That was just this past July. And the reason I bring this up is because that's what Charity Engine was created for. To, so that that didn't happen. Charity Engine helps nonprofits grow by reducing software and improving data. Now here are some of the uh, clients that work with the nonprofit clients that work on Charity Engine. And as you can see, there's uh, truly a range from some of the larger, more well-known, like Wounded Warrior Project, Fisher House, Toys for Tots, Share Our Strength, Ovarian Cancer National Alliance, to some of the smaller uh, nonprofits that are still growing. But what makes Charity Engine special is that it it works for all of these audiences. It works for all of these nonprofits. And it is the one theme amongst all of these organizations is that they made a decision that they cared the most about data. They weren't looking for features, of which we have many. They weren't looking for buttons, of which we have many. They were looking for a data solution. And that's for Wounded Warrior Project, who uh, I don't think it's hyperbole to say is probably one of the best multi-channel fundraising organizations in the nonprofit space, but also for Your Grateful Nation, which is uh, a small organization, just hired their second person. Okay? But they made the decision that if they were going to grow, they wanted all their data in one place from day one. And that's smart growth strategy in 2016. So today's webinar, we're going to go over a couple things. What is Charity Engine? How nonprofits end up in data silos? And the hint, too much software. Why destroying data silos is so important? And hint, donor centricity and data-driven analytics. And then we're going to take a tour through the impact, impact of being silo-free on one nonprofit's data. If you have any questions, you can reach me, lee.kessler at charityengine.net or marketing at charityengine.net. Uh, but just a quick note, the webinar here is designed to show Charity Engine's capabilities across any size organization, small, medium, or enterprise. Now, there are a number of enterprise features, including recurring donation management, multi-channel campaign management, uh, like TV, print, online, uh, social media, uh, complex queries and our credit card fraud prevention algorithms and analytics that are Charity Engine specialties that we won't be showing today. Um, but if you do have an interest in seeing some of those more enterprise level capabilities, uh, please again reach out to me at lee.kessler at charityengine.net and we're happy to send up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration of Charity Engine for you so you can see it in action. So what is Charity Engine? Well, it's a total CRM and fundraising solution. And the special thing about this is it's a single database to manage all of your contacts. Now, people always ask, oh, does it do this, do this? So I'm going to start with just going through the checklist. Now, you might have one system you're doing this in. You might have two, three, or a different software for each of these. So, uh, but we'll start with just showing you what indeed is involved in Charity Engine. Online donations and payment processing. So online forms, the transactions take place through Charity Engine. 
you're good. Email marketing, same software, same thing as a, a MailChimp, a Constant Contact, a SilverPop. Um, that we have our own baked-in system, uh, and all of that data feeds in, into the system. Uh, and multi-channel campaign management. So again, if you're doing other sorts of uh, campaigns, that can be tracked through Charity Engine. Events and volunteer management, whether you're doing community-based events or signature uh, in-house events uh, and the volunteers that go along with it, all of that takes place in Charity Engine. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising or DIY fundraising, again, uh, we have a very robust peer-to-peer -peer platform. You're going to see some really cool things we've done with it. Stick around for that, of course. Um, because peer-to-peer uh, -peer is growing, it's becoming, uh, it's it's really the pot, the next phase of fundraising, and you don't want to lose the data you're gaining there because you went with a separate system um, that seemed like a good choice for peer-to-peer. And lastly, advocacy. Advocacy is important because it's a way to get people engaged and interacting with you with, without asking them for money. But you start developing an idea of who cares about your mission, what part of the mission they care about, which really helps your marketing towards them. So what is Charity Engine? It's the first software built to destroy data silos and help nonprofits grow. See, we didn't build Charity Engine because people were saying, we want one system that does everything. We built it because the biggest challenge to nonprofits growing is that they use so many different systems across their organization and create so many silos of data that they're not able to use it. And if you can't use your data, you can't be donor-centric, and you certainly can't have the analytics that will help you grow strategically. So who does better data help? The fact is, it helps you, your department. It doesn't even matter what group you are, whether you're events, or your major gifts, or your direct response, or direct mail. Better data will make your job easier. It helps your donor, because again, the more you can deliver a personalized experience to them, and the easier it is for them to already feel part of the system, the more you're going to be able to engage them and have a better relationship, and that's what, of course, leads to better fundraising. Other departments, okay, if you're in special events, the people in major gifts, it matters to them. They need to know because if someone is attending an event, you want to know if they're on their major, their moves management, their major gift track. Your data admins, your executive team, if your executive director needs a report across the or entire organization, you want to be able to deliver that because that helps growth. Your board, same exact thing. Your agency partners, some of you might be using creative teams or creative agencies, fundraising agencies who are helping you along the process. Okay, they need data. They need data about your organization. Otherwise, they're guessing just as much as anybody else would be. The more data you provide, the more strategic you can be. And your data analyst partners, some of you may have even gone to the next level where you actually are working with groups that are focused specifically on data intelligence. You've saved so much time and money by just giving them the data instead of paying them to put all the data together. So this is the Charity Engine contact summary screen. Very simple, includes every bit of data, and I wanted to give you a quick tour through it just to understand what you're seeing and what Charity Engine is capturing about people. Now that is me. This is a, we, this is a real um, a contact screen from a, uh, from a nonprofit we are involved in. And uh, you can see my activities right here. Uh, very simple, very clean, but the data in there is what's amazing. And remember, this is only the summary screen. So what we have here is obviously basic information, my name, my primary address. Uh, there are other addresses in the system, but this is just showing the one you're more likely to get me to at right now in this part of the season, um, my, uh, my email and phone. Here's where you're going to dive deeper into more tabs that allow you to get uh, add more data, look up more data, and that's where the specific aspects of my contact relationship is. Um, this is important, relationships. Uh, you'll see that it doesn't say my just, you know, who is my employer, what organization do I work for, BIS Global. It actually looks at BIS Global as its own entity, and my relationship with it is that they're my employer. And the reason that matters is because in fundraising, as you're looking up news sources and you're trying to find relationships and do analytics based on what groups you can go after, we now know everybody who works at BIS Global, and we can start doing reporting and um, find out information to target them specifically. Um, that's why that matters. My donation summary you see here, quick look at month to date, year to date, and lifetime. And you're looking at direct and attributed. 
So my direct donations, but you'd also have if I, the money I'm getting through peer-to-peer -peer or corporate matching or, or, or buying a table uh, through my company. So again, you're starting to look at a full 360-degree view of a, uh, of a constituent. Peer-to-peer, -peer, again, this is so important. It's about networking, relationships, growing, and you need to understand where this person lies in your growth plans as far as peer-to-peer. -peer. You need to connect the dots. If your peer-to-peer -peer sits in one database and your main major giving sits in another database, you're never going to connect those dots. It will not happen in real time enough that you can utilize that data, and you're probably not going to import and export it, and you're going to end up with data silos. Opportunities, um, this would be for major gifts, moves management or such. I'm not a major giver, so that's not what's listed under here. But that's where you would see if I was on a track for major gift um, effort. Events, this shows the events I've attended or are, am attending. Up here we see the campaign summary. So this is my, uh, the emails that have been delivered to me, um, whether I've clicked through and any donations that were made via those emails. So you start getting a real sense of, of the relationship and the engagement and what it's leading to. And lastly, site visits. This is like Google Analytics, but we're actually, whereas Google Analytics is tracking things blindly, you generally know what people are doing, you don't know who, we actually can tell you how people are interacting with your website, your web, pro your web properties. So if you are an animal group and you have a picture of cats, one page is cats and another page is dogs. If I'm clicking on the dogs page, that's better than A-B testing. It tells you I'm probably interested in messages around dogs. And that's how you engage me and personalize. And as you can see on the left here, this is the menu that shows all of uh, Charity Engine, everything, um, all the pieces and how you get to the different sections, whether it's contact management, donation management, campaign management. So. So how do, that's Charity Engine, and now we're going to move forward. I want to talk, how do nonprofits end up in data silos? And the answer is because they use too many systems. Now, let's look at how nonprofits go about growing and acquiring new functionality to fundraise more and more. Well, it starts with a need for people to donate. Right? You need a web page, a website where people can go, give you money, do the transaction, and you're capturing information in the data. Then you needed to communicate with them. So you're probably looking at email marketing software and saying, okay, what can we do to, uh, to manage our email communications? Next is perhaps you're going to do an event. You're going to do a gala dinner, a run walk, a bowl -a -thon. You need some sort of software that's going to manage that event. And then you decide, well, what about P2P fundraising? Maybe it's tied into the event. Maybe you're doing it on its own, DIY fundraising. Uh, but you're adding these things as they go on. And then you need a data repository. You need to collect the data. And I'm actually going to highlight this because this is what it's about. You need to collect the data. The question is, is the solution you've created by going after these things doing it? Now here's this kind of software that people tend to acquire as they sort of fulfill this, this life cycle. Um, on the, some examples of if you need people to donate, right? Maybe you're going on the very easy, low, low, uh, low cost version of a form stack or a PayPal button, network for good. Uh, maybe you're a little bit more advanced in your fundraising, you're looking at a Salsa, or you're using a Salsa, or an ETAP, or a Convio. These are all excellent products, um, and I'm just really showing the life cycle of how one might end up with data silos. This isn't a criticism of any of these products. Um, but you're looking at how people might go about acquiring. Next is you're going to communicate. So if these products don't already have the communications tools, you may need to go out and get them. So you're looking at these types of uh, products. Next you decide to do an event. Say, well, what's the best event software? Does anybody know if we can get a good price? Um, sorry, we're looking at the P2P. The P2P fundraising, we decide we want to do P2P, we're going to go with a crowd rise or a resume. And now we've easily set up the ability for people to do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. We wanted to do the registration for events, so we'll look at an Eventbrite. Maybe you want something that combines the two. You look at some of the best solutions out there. You're probably going to look at something like a Classy or a Donor Drive, um, which bridge the two and allow you to do events and P2P fundraising. But now it gets to collecting the data. So your options for collecting the data, maybe you're using a Razor's Edge, where it's all feeding into using tools like Importomatic. 
Um, maybe you've got a Salesforce with your where you're bolting all these things into Salesforce, and that's where you're managing the data. Or maybe you don't have those kind of funds, and you're doing it all through Google Docs. Um, where you're sharing things on free Google Docs. Maybe you keep it all in an Excel spreadsheet and that's managed in a drop, free Dropbox account and everybody's just uh, ex accessing that Dropbox account. But the point is, this is sort of how nonprofits end up acquiring software and technology to manage their, the things that they're trying to do. But as you can see, it really creates confusing data. Whereas with a single platform, if you reduce that data software, use one platform, all of the data is in one place. And the best part is, you only need to remember one password. And you're probably chuckling when you see that, but that is a really important thing because nonprofits, people who work at nonprofits, heck, anybody in the world knows. The more passwords you have, the more confusing and difficult to manage it is. By doing everything in one system, you have one password, it is easier to do everything. So why destroying data silos is so important? The answer is donor centricity and analytics. You can't do either one if your data is sitting in a silo. This is an, uh, an article that came out just, um, uh, just on, I think on Monday, um, and I wanted to include it because I thought it was really important. This was a, uh, an Accenture interactive study was done and came up with what it called for B2B marketers the four R's of per personalization. And personalization goes a long way to donor centricity, donor centric fundraising. And I think as you look at these, even though it's B2B, it really applies to B2C. And more importantly, you are also B2B because you are trying to raise funds from organizations. Remember I showed the, the BIS Global, um, all the people who work there? Okay, now you're connecting all that information. So. The four R's, recognize, know your customers and prospects profiles, including demographic, firmographics, geography, and shared interests. Recommend, so you can reach them with the right marketing offer content or product recommendations based on their actions. Like I said, if they click on the picture of dogs, you want to send them information about dogs. Remember, knowing their history, and knowing their history, whether it's year to year, or knowing their history across your entire organization. If they've attended events, if they've donated online, if they've created a peer-to-peer, -peer, if they've taken an advocacy action, having all of that data, their history in one place, is how you grow. And lastly, relevance, okay? Delivering personalization within the context of the digital experience. Okay, when they come in, you want to be able to talk to them based on their, their history, knowing what they're interested in digitally, um, when they, uh, being able to offer their history, their, their giving history across any platform. So again, we look back at this quote, data silos make it hard to manage across an organization. They are barriers to a single view of a donor. This situation is the reality of life today. It's not, it doesn't need to be. Charity Engine helps nonprofits grow, by reducing that software and improving data. So now I'm going to take you on a little tour to show you how it, Charity Engine works in action. And you'll see the integration across all these different uh, areas of your nonprofit. So we're going to look at a, uh, a nonprofit that we are heavily involved in, um, which is called pmforchange.org. Their mission is to support nonprofits with pro bono project management consultation. Consultation that most nonprofits really can't afford, don't have the budget for, and uh, this organization is helping to offer professional services for free to nonprofits. Now we worked with them to create what we called the Project Management Day of Service. The first one was in 2015, um, and it was on Martin Luther King Day, and then we just had the second one two days ago, and this is a major initiative that we did with five DC metro area project management institute chapters partnered with the Taproot Foundation to provide over 400 project managers to nearly 100 charity and nonprofit organizations in what was the largest scope-a-thon in history. And you'll see what exactly it was, but this was an organization that we felt was helping nonprofits and we became very involved in because uh, we knew that this is something nonprofits really wanted and weren't able to afford and uh, what a cool way for us to be able to do that. Now the entire organization is managed on Charity Engine and that means their donations, their event registrations, their email marketing and communications, their event ticketing, and even their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And that's why I thought it was a great example to show when everything connects the kind of data you can look at. 
Uh, just to give you an understanding of what this event looked and felt like and what we were managing here, um, there were in two sessions, a group of 50 in the morning, a group of 50 in the afternoon. And uh, so here's an image of the people, the nonprofits and the PMs gathered around tables working out uh, solutions and challenges. We were managing over 60 staff volunteers. That's 60 people who were volunteering to help run the event um, over the course of about eight months was their involvement. This was a fully volunteer uh, initiative. So you know how hard it is to manage people who work in your office. You can only imagine people who are doing this entirely in their spare time. Uh, over 400 project management volunteers were involved in this. Over 100 nonprofits, and here's a great picture of uh, some folks from the National Peace Corps Association. And 21 event sponsors. So one of the ways they raise money was to do event sponsorships, and you could see tables like you have at most conferences or trade shows, um, and people paid for that. So you're managing a lot of different kind of people with different needs, paying different things. Uh, this was a huge event, and as you can see, Penny Pritzker, who is the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, was the um, kicked off the event. So this was no small beans. This was really a major D.C. initiative uh, that we were just honored to be part of. And as you can see, it turned into the largest scopathon ever. And full credit to Taproot, Billion Plus Change, and our friends at um, PM for Change. We're so excited that we were able to help make this such a success. So. How did they make this largest gathering? How did we get here? Passion, the same passion that you bring to your nonprofit job every day. Coordination, it was very challenging to coordinate all these different people who were doing this in their volunteering time, yet it was done. And the reason it was done was because of smart technology choices. They made the key decision that they would not create data silos. They wanted everything in one place. So all the things they needed to do, people to register, communicate, collect the info, P2P fundraise, match people. Had they not come across us, they might have looked at these solutions for registering, these for communication, these for fund P2P, these for matching people to match the relationships between the nonprofit and the, uh, the fundraiser, I mean the volunteer, and then this is where they would have kept it all. And it would have been just a mess, entirely hard to manage. So we're going to take our tour now through the impact of being silo free by looking at the software that ran it all. All right. So I want to show you a couple things before we actually even dive into the software. It's just uh, this is their website. And as you can see, very basic website. Um, they didn't have a lot of money to spend on this kind of thing. So they was volunteers um, building their website. They used a basic site. Um, and a couple of things I wanted to show. They had a very basic donate, donation form, but very effective, was collecting important information. And they're peer-to-peer. -peer. They had a whole peer-to-peer -peer fundraising solution connected to this, and people were raising money this way. So the volunteers were not only volunteering, but saying to friends and family, I'm involved, and, uh, and I want you to donate to our cause. Now, this is a, an example of it being done on, uh, this was very low budget, very easily done in, in the Charity Engine platform. But as I mentioned, we have a lot of enterprise clients, and I wanted to show you the same events module but being done by an organization that was operating with a little bit of a larger profile. And in that is No Kid Hungry. Share Our Strength, one of our, 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 our clients that we're thrilled to be able to work with. Um, as you can see, this is their culinary events page. And on the bottom, uh, which you can't see, but trust me, it says <laughs> Powered by Charity Engine. Uh, it's hidden because of that. Let's go to their T DC Taste of the Nation, which is an upcoming event. If we want to buy tickets, OK? And this is the page you can see up here in the URL, web.charityengine.net. So it's running on ours. Um, they have a promotion with City that can enter uh, their City card below to get a discount. We're able to help them manage that. So we do that, showing you just some of the capabilities. 200, I want to buy two VIP tickets. When I do that, automatically tallies. I want to add $1,000 donation, automatically tallies says it'll be the next page, and this is where I start filling out from my information. So I just wanted to show you the difference of what an event can look and feel like. Don't let the software guide what it's going to look like. Understand that with the right designers, the right group, you can do incredible things anywhere. Great example of their peer-to-peer. -peer. They have a program called Chef Cycle, and this is running on Charity Engine. 
And we see here, this is their peer-to-peer. -peer. They have chefs from around the country um, who are volunteering to ride in a bike ride, and they're doing raising money for it. We'll go, we'll look at this page. And as you can see here, very similar. All the tools, very nice, very clean, all connected, p2p.charityengine.net. So I don't want you to be, uh, I want you to see that whether you're a small org that doesn't have a lot of resources or you're an enterprise level org that's got the resources to devote to the marketing budget and the creative budget, you can do anything you really want to do in Charity Engine. It's really phenomenal stuff. So let's close that out and let's take a look at PMO strategies. So I want to look at this from the perspective of, um, of the event, an event registration. I want to see you to see how when you choose event software that's automatically part of uh, Charity Engine, how it all integrates. So we're looking here. This is the dashboard when you log into Charity Engine. And this is actually a cool thing that I'll show you integration on a very visual uh, level. This is, where sh um, this is a map that shows where contacts in the system are located, right? So you get a quick res representation, obviously, in the uh, no offense flyover states, as they're called. Uh, not a lot of representation, but here in Nevada, we've got one, California two, and obviously because this is in DC and Maryland and such, uh, it's heaviest there. So there we're seeing the number of contacts. Let's look at donations, okay? And now we're seeing how much money is coming from all of those states. So that information is all being brought together. And then let's look at campaigns. Okay, campaigns mean ev mean anytime somebody was uh, refers to, and this is obviously a very summar summarizing page. Every time there was an interaction uh, with somebody via campaign. So not a lot in Vermont, not a lot in New York. You get down to Virginia, fourteen hundred. You get into Maryland, seventeen hundred. So you're seeing right there how all of the data is sitting in real time in one place. That's the campaigns, the donations, and the contacts. So over here in the calendar, we actually will go into our uh, project management day of service. We'll click on the event. Okay, and this is where the event was managed. Now you'll see that it's yellow here. This is the events module. Um, this is all you have to do to set up the, the event itself. Obviously on the front end, you're going to do whatever kind of creative and HTML work you want to do to make the page look, whether it's much like PM DOS's did or share our strength, but this is the back end. This is how they're all operating it. So from here, this is our 2016 PM day of service. Let's go to manage check-ins. Okay, and this is our check-in screen. We can see all the people. This was obviously last Monday. We can see all the people who were checked in. Let's go look up me, all right? So start typing Lee. Here pops up my name, good. Now, it didn't show up because I've been here longer than the past month, so let's go to all. Okay, and now we see my registration. So we can check me in just by clicking that, no big deal. Now I'm checked into the event, and I can also, oh, that was an error, I want to check out, do that too. Now, there's two things I want to show. You've got your basic information about the event, what kind of ticket I purchased, any guests that I might have had, uh, the type of ticket it is. But here you have my contact information. You also have the transaction ID. So let's click on that and show you how all of this is connected. We could go into my contact ID from here, but I'm going to take you via, and by the way, more male, 40 years old. Uh, no big deal if you didn't wish me happy birthday. Um, so here's the event. Here's how much I paid for the transaction. We click on it. Okay. And now this takes us to the, the event transaction page. Okay. So you have all your basic information. It was a one-time cost, an event registration. I came in by the day of volunteers form. Um, it shows you the date that I, that I made that um, payment, the amount, the fact that it was approved, even what IP address I came in, which is part of how we're able to do a lot of our fraud um, prevention and analytics is being able to look at IP addresses and knowing the ones that are uh, considered um, high risk. Uh, one thing I want to show you on data, if we click here, we see this is all the data that was collected. And there were some custom fields on the registration page. You can see here that it actually shows I selected the shift morning, my subject matter expertise, facilities or equipment, interest areas, religious. So all that data was being uh, captured in the transaction. All of that is reportable um, and queryable data. We'll go back here to the contact. The contact was me, Lee Kessler. I'm a person. And I can do a lot of work to this, but let's go into my contact record. OK, 
Okay? And you'll see here, this is the same contact record I was showing earlier in the presentation. So now we've gone into the event, we ch checked me in, we were able to go to uh, my transaction, look up my transaction, and from either one, get to my contact record. And this is where it's exciting. Um, you see here my relationships. Now remember that I'm an employee of BIS Global, um, but I was also assigned to career catchers as the 2016 assigned nonprofit. So um, my participation in the event was that I sat at the career catchers table and helped them as well. And um, so now you're able to look at different kinds of relationships and that's really valuable data. It's valuable in the long term, it's valuable in the short term. Um, what's going to be interesting to you here is as we get to interactions and this is what all of your data in one place without silos looks like. First we have all of my historic transactions. So you can see these right here and obviously there's some voiding because we were, because it's our project, we were doing some testing, um, but we see all those those charges and voids. It's all tied into me. One thing I do want to show you is you can see right here um, online now, see the little bubble next to that image? That tells you that I'm on a Charity Engine property or PM uh, DOS property. Um, and that is able to be tracked. That's, so that's how you know people are interacting with the software. We see here all the different donations I gave um, and where the money came from, peer-to-peer -peer donation form. Again, if that, that happened in real time, if that's sitting in a different silo, then that data is never going to get here. But the fact is it is already part, it is real time part of the rest of my, uh, my, um, my profile. We see the peer-to-peer, -peer. we see that I filled out the staffing volunteers form, which was a zero dollar transaction, um, and then we see that I logged in and filled out the volunteers form, and that was all, that included a transaction, obviously voided. Very easy to void and very easy to, uh, to change charges. Um, from transactions, we'll move over to peer-to-peer. -to -peer. So again, within the same tab system, I just click over here and now you see that I had Project Management Day of Service, that's the portal, the page I was on. We can see my URL, that's my page where I do my fundraising. And we see my goal, my raise, and it's active. And you can see that I actually, even though I set up a page, I didn't do anything for it. Um, but, uh, but that data all sits right here. And every portal that I might have set up would historically be here. Page visits. Mention this, like the Google Analytics, this is tracking everything. Now I'm in the, the because I'm in the back end, we're tracking even the most uh, granular of data, but um, this is important because now we know my history and we're able to do any kind of querying or reporting based on that. Campaigns, okay, we see here, these are all of the email campaigns that I, uh, that I received. It shows you if I viewed it, um, if I clicked on any links, um, uh, how many clicks I did, and whether I converted. So now you see all these different areas of interaction that if this was sitting in an email marketing software, this data would not be here in real time. But the fact that it is, I can go to analytics and look up everything in that campaign right from here. Again, reducing software brings all your data to one place, making it more accessible. Um, advocacy, there wasn't any, but if there were, was some tied to this, you'd see it there. And we'll go to events. And now you see that these are the two events I attended, the 2016 PM Day of Service and the 2015 uh, PM Day of Service. You see we configured it. It's easily configurable. The type is a scopathon. We see the type of ticket I bought. We saw that this year I paid $20. Last year there was no registration fee, so I didn't pay. And, um, and checked in. You remember that I checked in and then I checked out. You're seeing no, that's why. Um, so now you're seeing how all of the data sits in one place and there is no importing and exporting. It is live and in there. A um, couple other things is applications. So when people fill out forms, you can tie them directly into a campaign list, which is for email marketing. So you can see that I'm on this list, I'm on this list, I'm on this list, this list, and the sponsors list. So I'm recognized if they want to email or send out communications to any of these specific groups, all they have to do is use that list and it will automatically be fed to me. Uh, and those are easily added by I can just pick another one and then click add. Um, groups is another way we look at it. So you can group people together. I'm part of the 2015 staffing volunteers group and the 2016 and I'm already part of the 2017 staffing volunteers group. So you're seeing the different ways that you can look at people, hold on to them and communicate to them. 
Um, so that is shows you the incredible tie-in of data between a person who comes into an event and then all the historic information around them. Two other things I want to show you is how email campaign can tie into revenue and how we can see that. So um, let's look in our campaigns. Okay, we'll go to creative. And actually what we want to do is not there, we want to go to initiatives. So creative is the content, initiative is the act of uh, deploying it. And I want to look at all of them because I know the specific one I want to see. Okay, now here we see all the different email campaigns. We see the links, the, and all the information that might have been in there. And here we see conversions, okay. This email converted zero, converted zero, converted zero. But here we see this one converted nine. There were nine conversions, so and that was the newsletter here. So now you're starting to see the connection between I sent out an email and I know what that led to. So I'm going to take that conversion, that initiative ID, copy it. Now we're going to click here, okay, and I type in the con initiative ID here, refresh it, okay, and now I see the nine people that were converted in somehow, and you can see here these are their names. You can see the money that they gave, all here, and you can see that the different amounts of money. So the $20 was the general registration. Here's $50. Somebody chose to give more. We added that on if you'd like to donate more. That choice was made. Now you notice it also shows the form that everybody came on, and all these end in 4010 telling you it's a certain form, except one, which is 3920, and that person gave 39, 30, uh, $30. Okay, so they registered here, they just chose to donate on this form. They're different forms. But you're seeing how all of the information ties together because we're not using different systems. We're using one system so all the data is brought together. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you is event analytics and, and the queryability of the, the system. So I wanted to run a report. Um, across a number of aspects of the organization. And I'll show you where we do it. We do that here in queries. Okay. And I've already set up the query, so I'm just going to show you what it looked like. I called it 2016 check-ins with nonprofit relationships and P2P. So I wanted to know their their check-in information, um, who their nonprofit relationship they were assigned to, that 2016 day of uh, consultant member, I was career catchers. I want to see everybody's there. And I also want to see if they um, created a P2P page, if they did. So we'll go to edit just to see what this looked like. Okay, so the first thing we did of, we created, we did a query, this is a subquery, and we chose, show me everybody who was a check-in. We ran that query and now we pulled it out of the subquery. So that's our filter. We want everybody who checked in. And of those people who checked in, Okay. We want to see this information, their name, and here's the data I did pull, the full name, first name, last name, primary email address, their opposite contact name, which is that relationship, um, the type they were, um, that, so that's the type of participant, their user page if they had one, and I also wanted to look at their lifetime attributed amount. How much money have they raised in total uh, for the organization? So that is simply done. I'm going to skip a few steps just to show you. Once you're done with that, you import and export. Here we see that relationship, that uh, that import-export. It's been finished. There it is. And here is the actual report. Now I crossed out some information because I didn't want you to see their names or email addresses because we're looking at uh, a lot of people with how much money was given. But here you see their contact ID, their first name, their last name, their primary email address, the organization that they were partnered with, the relationship type, which is the 2016 DOS consultant, okay, and you can see not a lot of people created peer-to-peer -peer pages, but I can see, and I highlighted in green, somebody who did, okay. So this woman um, was part of her signed nonprofit with Shepherd's Table. We could see her fundraising page, what it was called, and we could see that all these people gave 20, there was a 50. This person gave has raised $128. So that's not just that's peer-to-peer their registration fees and any other donations they may have made. This is an example probably of somebody who made a donation. So that, in summary, is that that's what we wanted to show you here in today's presentation, is that 
when you reduce your software and you don't choose software based on letting this group say, okay, we like this because it's easy to use or we like these features or we like this one and then create disparate data systems and silo data, when you bring it all together in one platform like we have here, which you can see is robust enough for a share our strength to have absolutely gorgeous pages and a PM DOS, a smaller organization that doesn't have the resources to still get up a good looking version of what they need, all of that data is here and usable and that's how you grow. That's how you become donor centric and that's how you have the data to move forward. So I thank everybody for participating in today's conversation. Again, I am Lee Kessler. You're welcome to reach me at marketing at charity engine.net or at um, Twitter at Lee Kess. Follow us on Twitter at Charity Engine US. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them. Um, oh, and we looks like we do. Okay, and I apologize that I'm only getting the questions now. One man operation here. Um, are you able to track volunteers as well, or only donors? Absolutely, volunteers. There's all. Um, Okay, here it is. It's not we, we didn't set up volunteers uh, here, but here's where it would be managed, search and manage, um, where you can create any kind of volunteer type. You can have uh, volunteer posts, and you can manage all that. So all of that would be done here, and that's important because you can start seeing you know people who volunteer their time for you, and also maybe their cumulative giving to you. Uh, some other questions. How does this software interact with accounting software, or is there an accounting function? Uh, we play nice with any uh, accounting software. Uh, there are some accounting functionalities in here, but you would definitely want to use a different accounting software. What's nice about accounting software is, is they tend to follow the same um, the same fields and the same capabilities. So it's very easy to do integrations and APIs uh, with different kind of accounting software. So we do it all the time, QuickBooks, or name the one that you like working with. Um, what are the pricing structures? It's based on what you're looking to purchase or what you um, uh, what your what your needs are, and that can be scaled up as you grow and you need things. If you don't need events now, but you will later, that can be included later. Again, as I showed you, we have uh, an organization as large as Wounded Warrior Project running on this, and then you have an organization with uh, that just hired their second person, Your Grateful Nation. Uh, so you can imagine the scale pricing uh, for everybody. Um, there is global tracking for donations. Somebody asked that question, similar to the USA uh, map um, that we showed. So you would be able, and I can actually pull that up. I don't think we'll see it in great detail here, but um, this would be the global, and in the same way in the U.S., this many contacts, and uh, Alaska is part of the U.S., and we can see how many donations came from there, and there's all that, all that data information. Um, So how do you track foundations and corporations for grants and sponsorships? Um, so that is in, and that wasn't done here uh, because they weren't looking to do that, but that is in our, um, our opportunities. And opportunities, that's basically move management. Um, if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one demonstration that we could show you exactly how that works, uh, you would see it here. Um, but you would, uh, it, would, it would show just where every opportunity, what track they're on, what stage they are, um, and then all the information related to who the solicitor is, who their primary contact is, the expected value of it, status date, and any actions that need to be, take place. So that is there. Yeah, how much does it cost? I mean, uh, it, 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 it starts very low and uh, it can be very high. So it, it, don't let costs get in the way of making your decision because uh, A, it's probably less expensive than what you're using, um, but B, and the reason that works is because of B, which is the total cost of ownership. Once you start consolidating, you bring things in one house, um, it is much easier for you to pay very little to get more robust features. So uh, definitely reach out to us and find out that information. Uh, does this software integrate well with WordPress? It certainly does. Um, we have our own built-in CMS, uh, so you can utilize our CMS for um, building your pages, but we also play nice with every one of them. That's one area that we realize that people have a great deal of comfort and the data is less important. So there's um, some of our clients work on WordPress, some of them Joomla, um, you name it, and they, they work on it. 
somebody said, I'm already on ETAP. Would this be easily integrated, transferable? We do it all the time. Um, we do it with all sorts of, uh, I, I won't list everybody, but um, we have, uh, in, we implement and bring people over from all sorts of softwares. Uh, and part of that process is looking at all your data, consolidating your data, cleaning it. And that's one of the best parts about the entire process is the data hygiene experience you go through. Um, you need to clean your data. It's spring cleaning. And a lot of nonprofits have grown with the silo data, and they never take the time to bring it together. So that's one of the things we'll go through with you is how we can make the most use of the data you already have and then consolidate it uh, for moving forward. But implementations and um, conversions take place all the time. We're familiar with, I think, every single uh, platform out there. Um, so um, somebody asked, I, I won't go into the specific uh, competitor, but they said, how do we differentiate ourselves uh, from, from one particular competitor, uh, which is a, a well-known CRM as well? Um, the, our differentiation is in our, I believe, our advanced analytics, um, our approach to credit card processing, um, things that tools that we have that I mentioned earlier, like our credit card automatic updating service, um, which is if you have recurring donors, we probably are the absolute best in the business in making sure that you don't have to um, contact your donors to replace uh, old credit cards. Um, we utilize technology built in the gym industry, and you can imagine nobody is better at that. Um, so we're very strong in that department. Um, our, our fraud prevention, as I mentioned, didn't want to get into it here, but um, you can imagine some of our larger clients, the amount, of, uh, the amount of fraudulent activity and attempts to use credit cards on their software platforms, um, some of the larger ones that are really very well known. Um, we are constantly stopping fraud. We're constantly uh, looking for fraud. So I don't think anybody in the industry probably goes as far to protect your data and to give you access to all of your data um, as we do. Uh, but I, I, I highly recommend a one-on-one -on -one because we, we can demo, because then we can really sit with you and say, OK, here's what your challenge is, in, and here's where Charity Engine so, uh, uh, solves it. Um, uh, can we do another webinar about working with QuickBooks? Uh, we certainly can. Um, if you wanted a direct question, we're happy to answer it. Reach out to me, uh, lee.kessler at charityengine.net or marketing at charityengine.net. Uh, happy to answer that. Um, how does it integrate with your existing website? Uh, easily. Um, you could, as far as uh, what you already have, and if you've got a front-facing website, you're just talking about the forms that one would attach, um, we would just give you a page that mimics your existing pages. Uh, I mean, we could do the entire CMS, but if all you're looking for is you're, that you're happy with your current pages, but you want to change your forms and run on the system, uh, we would we would mock up, we would create recreate, sorry, your existing form, um, and uh, it would match that. And every form we do is really amazing. And you could have that sort of that quick tech, you could have the, a, a basic form in the same way you saw that PMDOS had it for their registration or something more um, uh, ad adventurous like you saw with Share Our Strength. Is there mobile access? Great question and super important. Absolutely. Charity Engine was built um, with the idea that you are not going to be only using this on your desktop computer. You're going to be using it on an iPad. You're going to be using it on your phone. And I can tell you, one of the things about Charity Engine is we, we use the term, we dog food it. We run our entire marketing uh, operations on Charity Engine. So we know the ins and outs of it. We, we experience uh, what our users go through, uh, which makes us really knowledgeable about what's happening. Um, I can tell you that when I send out an email, um, I can then later that day, I can send out an email at 4, go home at 6.30, at, uh, while, I'm, while I'm at home, quickly pull up on my phone to see how my emails are tracking. Um, you can do anything. All of our forms are, are dynamic and mobile responsive. So if your people are donating uh, you know, online, uh, on their phone, all of that's built right in. So um, it is probably one of the motor, most mobile responsive. Um, and it's very light, uh, even though this is a robust platform, the visuals excuse me, are very light. And what that does is it makes it easy to run on your cell. It's not going to take a long time to download uh, download the different uh, pages. You're not stuck with heavy data each time. Um, so another great aspect of it. You're gonna, it's going to be easier to get the access uh, information quick. Can contact type be customized beyond donor, event participant, volunteer? 
would love to track board members, clients. Absolutely. Let's go to configuration real quick and show you how you can. Um, so your your contact right here. So your contact. Uh, um, your, well, first of all, your relationship type. Let me show you that. So here we go to all. Okay, there's system-wide ones that are built in, so you have everything you'd want grandchild to grandparent, grand sibling to sibling, employer to employee, client to consultant. So a lot of them are already built in, and here you see the configuration of relationships, 2016 DOS consultant, and the opposite of that is a 2016 assigned NPO. So um, that is all uh, easily done. And so this is our basic configuration. Not every bond, this is also permission. Configuration is permissioned. So um, you can, uh, you can, um, you, not everybody has to have access to it. In fact, you can limit it to a very select group of people. Um, so you were asking about contact types. In that case, we would go to contact status. And let's look at all of our contact statuses. And here you have chapter head, DOS volunteer media, sponsor vendor. All we would want to do is go in here, their status. board member, create, and then board member is now in there. When we look at the drop down, it's going to be right there. Can you do zip code tracking? Um, you absolutely. One of the cool things about our queries is we can do radius tracking. We can say, I want everybody, here's my location, here's my zip code. I want everybody in five mi within five miles. I want everybody with, uh, outside of five miles. So there's incredible flexibility for zip code tracking. Also, USPS um, uh, updating. So if you need the zip plus four, um, we have the functionality that you just click on a certain button and it will, uh, it will update that exact information. Can you integrate membership into the system? I mean, there is a whole membership concept, so I'm not sure exactly what you mean. If you mean a recurring donor, we have that. Uh, if you mean a subscriber, we have that. Um, or if you're managing members who maybe they get some sort of special discount, um, and that's associated, uh, similar to you know, a member of Friends of the National Zoo type of thing, uh, you'd certainly be able to set up those kind of memberships with recurring payments, too. So if they get charged once a year, uh, we would be able to do that. Um, is there a section to track specific cultivation strategies for major donors? Yeah, that's in opportunities. Um, we have, I believe on our YouTube channel, there are some videos about how opportunities works. Um, I am more than happy to walk you through it one-on-one -on -one to show you the incredible robustness of our opportunities, but there definitely is a video on, um, on opportunities. So uh, our website, somebody just says, is this a website for you? Um, we are charityengine.net. We are not charityengine.com. .com is a different product based in the UK, which is not a CRM, but also nonprofit related. We are charityengine.net. Um, user functions, as I said, can all be customized. Um, does Charity Engine allow for multiple users' logins? Yes, very important. Um, we do not charge you by the user. Um, and the reason is we want everyone to have their own login. Um, and the reason for that is we can run um, audits on every individual person so we can um, tell you, first of all, we don't want people sharing information because you're, you have access to important data, so we want everybody to have their own login and password. But um, you, you can also systematically log people out because they have different uh, logins. Um, but there's complete control of who has access to what, um, but no, there are no extra charges. We want everybody to use their own because we want to be able to audit and track and see who's doing what and be able to roll back uh, when needed. Yeah, charityengine.net, I should say it over and over again. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. Um, can you create member sections with passwords to reach certain contact? Uh, yes, we can. So if you have, um, you want people to be able to log in, we do have clients who have that capability. Um, and that maybe that's what you mean also by membership based. Um, so if you're an association that has members, they want login access, uh, we certainly do that um, and protect it. Uh, is there a flat rate that we charge for donations? Um, there's basically, uh, there are a couple contingencies on what on what charges are um, related to flat rate. It's it's not like a resume or um, 
I, I would imagine a network for good has or PayPal has specific uh, types. Um, it is based on your usership. There's a percentage of the transaction, um, and then there's the cost of the authorized. Uh, things like the gateways and the merchant processors like authorized.net um, that can run anywhere from $75 a month to if you have our advanced credit card automatic updating that can run then it can get to a total of about $140 a month um, not super expensive those are not our costs those are just the cost of being able to run the transactions uh, but all of those processing fees all of the processing is baked into our system so you can do all your voids voids in here charged backs um, every bit of data is there Okay, so I went much longer than I wanted to because I like to respect everybody's time. We're almost in an hour, but thank you all for joining. Um, if I missed your question, and I may have missed a couple, but if I missed your question, please reach out to me. Um, uh, marketing at CharityEngine.net. You can reach me by Twitter. You can reach our organization this way. Uh, it was a pleasure going over the value of Charity Engine with you. I hope it makes sense. I hope you understand how we're destroying silos uh, for nonprofits and really changing the way you approach your purchase and your approach to technology. It's not about what's easiest. It's not about necessarily what people want and say I'm familiar with. It's about how do we create a data strategy? And the answer is less software will give you better data. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. And again, always feel free to reach out to us directly.